WEF this year is digital and virtual. Xi was speaking from Beijing. It's one example of how this year's virtual event is much different from the usual gathering. Now, the agenda is as crowded as ever. However, the town of Davos most definitely is not. In many places around the world, the streets there are empty. That, that Congress Center, Congress Centrum, if it was now with Davos there, there'd be armed guards, there'd be barriers around it, and every hotel would be full. That would be the Belvedere. Well, there you are, the Belvedere. And that's the Intercontinental. They would be festooned with adverts. But not this year. Maybe Singapore in May is when it'll all happen. I spoke to Dr Klaus Schwab, who, of course, is the man behind the event, and I asked Professor Schwab why it was important to hold this year's meeting, even if it meant virtually from a distance. I think we are at the beginning of a new year, a very decisive year. We have a new US administration. We may uh, be in a situation where we make progress in fighting the virus. So we want to use it as a mobilization week to make everybody aware now some changes are needed. We have to create a more um, responsible approach to our global affairs. The one thing we have learned is, we learned it in the Great Recession, but we're learning it again, Professor, is the inequality, those at the bottom got worst hit again. And I just question, what purpose does any meetings have if this is just always the same story and nothing changes? It's not the same story because uh, you have to walk the talk. I mean, um, we, we have a number of uh, uh, concrete projects where we bring together business leaders, government leaders. I just mentioned uh, our project uh, to reskill and upskill one billion people in this decade. And this is not just talk. Uh, I mean, we have uh, started to work together mainly with uh, IT companies. And uh, we know we will be measured according to what we deliver and not just based on what we say. Uh, we on Quest Means Business have always talked about the CEOs as the new moral barometers. I know some people bristle at that because they say that's not the, the CEO's role. But the reality is what we've learned in pandemic again, like Great Recession before, great power rests with CEOs to set an agenda. Yes, it's um, great power, but in combination uh, with governments. I mean, we have seen governments governments becoming stronger and uh, businesses becoming stronger. What I'm worried about is uh, what is the fallout for small and medium-sized businesses in the future. So it's one of the structural uh, issues which we have to address. Final question, Professor. How can you ensure and I agree fully with what you say about coming together and meeting together. And I agree, and I agree fully that, that there is real value in us coming together to talk about these things. My concern and my question is, how can you ensure that real change happens as a result and that we are not in the future going to be back to business as usual? Look, the problem today is that everything is interconnected. Uh, the social dimension, the uh, economics, the technological, and so on. Everything is interconnected. And you cannot solve complex issues in very simple ways. Mm. And that's also a difference of, of Davos, that we deal with all those issues, uh, taking, let's say, putting them into an ecosystem. And it makes it difficult, it makes it challenging. But um, I think you have to push again and again.